In 1896, Taylor entered numerous races in the northeastern states of Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Connecticut. After winning a 10-mile road race in Worcester, Taylor competed in the 25-mile, 40-kilometers, Irvington-Milburn race in New Jersey, also known as the Derby of the East. Within half a mile, 0.8 kilometers, of the finish line, someone startled Taylor by tossing ice water into his face and he finished in 23rd place. Taylor's first major East Coast race was in a League of American Wheelmen, Law, one-mile contest in New Haven, Connecticut, where he started in last place but won the event. In August 1896, Taylor made a trip to Indianapolis, where he set an unofficial new track record of 2, 11 and a fifth for a distance of one mile at the Capital City Velodrome, beating Walter Sanger's official track record of 2, 19 and 2 fifths. Taylor could not compete with Sanger, a professional racer, in a head-to-head -head contest because he was still an amateur. Taylor's final amateur race took place on November 26, 1896, in the 25-mile Tatum Handicap at Jamaica, New York. Taylor finished the race in 14th place. As Taylor gained notoriety as an amateur and a professional, he did not escape racial segregation. In 1894, the law changed its bylaws to exclude blacks from membership. However, it did permit them to compete in its races. Although Taylor's cycling was greatly celebrated abroad, particularly in France, his career was still restricted by racism, particularly in the southern U.S., where some local promoters would not permit Taylor to compete against white cyclists. Some restaurants and hotels also refused to serve him or provide him lodging. Taylor asserted in his autobiography that prominent bicycle racers of his era often cooperated to defeat him, such as the Butler brothers, Nat and Tom, were accused of doing in the one-mile world championship race at Montreal in 1899. At the law races in Boston, shortly after Taylor had won the world championship, he accused the entire field that included Tom Cooper and Eddie Bald, among others for fouling him. Taylor complained after the event that he had been bumped, jostled, and elbowed until I was sorely tried. Racing promoter William A. Brady, who was also Taylor's manager, chastised the other riders for their rough treatment of Taylor during the race. While some of Taylor's fellow racers refused to compete with him, others resorted to intimidation, verbal insults, and threats to physically harm him. While racing in Savannah, Georgia, in the winter of 1898, he received a written threat saying, Clear out if you value your life. The previous day, Taylor had challenged three riders together to a race after one of them had said they didn't pace niggers. Taylor recalled that ice water had been thrown at him during races and nails were scattered in front of his wheels. Taylor further stated in his autobiography that he had been elbowed and pocketed, boxed in by other riders to prevent him from sprinting to the front of the pack, a tactic at which he was so successful. Taylor's competitors also tried to injure him. One incident occurred after the one-mile Massachusetts Open race at Taunton on September 23, 1897. At the conclusion of the race, William Becker, who placed third behind Taylor in second place, tackled Taylor on the racetrack and choked him into unconsciousness. Becker who claimed that Taylor had crowded him during the race, was temporarily suspended while the incident was investigated. Becker received a $50 fine as punishment for his actions, but was reinstated and allowed to continue racing. In another incident, which occurred in February 1904, when Taylor was competing in Australia, he was seriously injured on the final turn of a race when fellow competitor Iver Lawson veered his bicycle toward Taylor and collided with his front wheel. Taylor crashed and lay unconscious on the track before he was taken to a local hospital and later made a full recovery. Lawson was suspended from racing anywhere in the world for a year as a result of his actions.